thing before one gets married having as many boyfriends is something considered to be uh, uh, an honor or you can't say it's an honor or it's a trendy thing fashionable trendy it's in vogue you know people want to say like yes i had about 10 boyfriends in my uh, college times or somebody says i had about 15 girlfriends in my college days you know something trendy they say like yes i was a very happening person in my college days you know that's what they say but imagine if that person happens to be your sister or your brother would you like to say that or your mother or anybody amongst your relative happened to be one amongst those list of girlfriends in a person whom you know you would not like it isn't it so culture needs to be preserved a man if he wants to speak to his wife it is something which is a very good thing say most of you are in 17 18 or more, rather you're in 20 plus isn't it 20 plus 20 plus See, 20 plus, today's culture, let me tell you, getting married, if I say that you have to get married, if I say one of you is worthy to get married, they'll say, no, 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 still the time has not come. But to have boyfriends, the time has come. To have girlfriends, the time has come. But to get married, the time has not come. I don't understand this. See, you make it lawful. You like somebody. You like somebody who's interesting. You like, you like the person's, the person's nature, nature character, character the way that, that person, person is expressing to you you, you like, like that person, person get married make it lawful study, study together. together but what's but happening is going the wrong way right in the institution, institution. No, no 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 we don't want to get married we are like steady it's, it's going on a steady we're still having an affair how long would that last i don't know we are just trying to work it out probably a year if then we'll see then after that two years three years pass no i have to migrate to another land it's not going to work and what happens everything gone back into the brain so what is it going to help how is it going to benefit you're not able to contain yourself well you're not able to manage yourself well you're not able to manage your own psychology your own self how do you manage an institution how do you become a good entrepreneur or entrepreneur how can you do that if you cannot manage your own self whenever i see on the streets sometimes i see somebody having affairs you know i'm living in the city i'm not living in a very uh, it's not a holy land i would not say this is a holy land that i'm living in i'm living in a land where i see everything i see wine stall i see affairs i see a lot of things one time i go i see somebody a couple, they're laughing out of glory. They're like, wow, wow, all of these things, yes. Then say, this is stage, this is stage two. Oh, sorry, this is stage three. Sometimes I'm walking, I see a couple where the lady is walking in the front and the guy is coming at the back. I say, this is stage one. I go further, I go further, both of them, they start giggling and they walk stage three. But did I say stage three earlier? So this is stage two, I can say. Stage four, the lady would start crying. She'll start crying. And that's the end. That's the end. Some may go to stage five. Very rarely. Very rarely it may go to stage five. Okay, let's get married. Otherwise, most of the cases at stage four. Stage four, khalas. Like how you have, you have this uh, in the management, they teach you the birth of an institution, the growth of the institution, saturation point, and the death of the institution. You have this in the management. There's a growth, then there is a saturation point, and there is also death. So there are so many affairs that end up in death. Any? The affair ends. And some go to the extent of suicide and all that. Why? Because they are not able to manage themselves. Yes, you are bound to have infatuation. But you need to know how to control. You can't go and have affair with everybody on the street. You need to have your own set limits. And if you don't learn this in schools and colleges, what would you be on the time when you are given some platform? Probably you will start imitating Clinton, Monica Lewinsky. You all know? 
Clinton and Monica Lewinsky, what happened? He could not manage. Man who is on that caliber, he had to take a very false oath. He had to take a false oath saying that he had nothing to do, but then later on he backtracked. So many such cases, even in our country, if you happen to see, you know, Mr. N.D. Tiwari, the governor of Andhra Pradesh, he could not manage himself. He was caught red-handed with three women. Why is this happening? Moral degradation. So my dear brothers, let me tell you, make it lawful. Youngsters you are, you are very important. Your family, your parents should feel proud about you, the way you are. Yes, my son, he's a gentleman. Yes, if he wants to, he wants to, you know, satisfy or gratify himself, he would get it done lawfully. You can get married, who's stopping you from getting married? But marriage means it's a big thing. But going out on a date is easy thing. How is it? I don't understand. If going out on a date is easy, why does marriage become difficult? If a man cannot take that big of a commitment, then how is it he is able to take this kind of commitment? You see on the magazines we see, we read the magazines on the week or outlook, we hear about one night stands. Like what is this one night stand has been saying? You know, it's happening in the institutions. It is happening in the shopping centers. It is happening in the software development companies. What is this one night stand? It's fine. As long as we are not harming anybody, it's fine. No, this is not fine, my dear brother. This is not fine. These are all ethical degradation. Don't imitate any culture. You see, you look into your own self. See if it is right or wrong. Look and go and back to all the religious scriptures. All the religious scriptures want you to become a modest person. Nobody wants to say like you live like animals. But why do they live like animals? Because have, they have got this concept, wrong concept, that man evolved from apes. There's a concept to justify what they're doing. Do you believe that man evolved from apes? How many of you believe? Oh, come on, you're all science students. Nobody is science student here? There, oh, then you must give me a reason why you don't believe that man didn't evolve from apes. Do you think man evolved from apes? Anyone here? Do you want to say that your ancestors were apes, gorillas? Who wants to say that your ancestors were chimpanzees? I don't want to say that. I don't want to say my ancestors were you know, baboons and chimpanzees and gorilla. Lemurs. Who amongst you want to say that? No, I don't see even one hand. Finally, there's one hand. Okay, do you believe in that? Darwinism. Okay, Darwinism. You know this brother, he's... A lot of people didn't want to come out because of my statements. You know, don't want to say like, no, my forefathers were chimpanzees. So anyway, as a scientific student, he wants to make a point, which is valid. We appreciate your thought, saying that Darwinism. See, 1859, Darwin sent the beagle to the uh, Galapagos Islands, and he wanted to research and find as to how man evolved. And he actually closely looked into the finches and saw the development of the beaks, and he came to the conclusion that the theory of natural selection, which was propounded by Lamarck, the origin of species was once again developed by Darwin. But do you know Darwin's theory has remained as a theory Darwin's theory is nothing more which is more than a theory. It is not substantiated, which is not given any credible proofs for what he has said. Let me tell you, because of his theory, people have dug up to find the fossils of the Cambrian explosion. The oldest which can be traced in our times is the Cambrian explosion, wherein the fossils were found of all the species at one given point of time, which is a direct contradiction to what Darwin was propounding. You getting me what I'm saying? Darwin's theory says that it's a theory of natural selection, wherein one species developed into another species, another species developed into another species, and goes on the cycle. So it was disproved the time that the fossils were actually researched. The second thing, the recent study on DNA, the DNA 
the recent times make it very clear that whatever you are, it is completely programmed in the DNA. You can't be anything more or anything less. It is completely. So what they came out with, they came out with another theory, the, 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 the neo-Darwinism. They said that because of an accident, there was a sudden change in the DNA system and there came another creature. Once again, that has been disproved. So why am I giving you all these things? Last one proof I'll give you. You know the cranial volume of human being. It is 1400 cc. And the cranial volume of apes is 700 cc. If man had actually evolved from apes, then you should have found 710 cc or 720 cc brain or you must have seen 1000 cc cranial volume but you don't get to see all of these things in the fossils. So what we conclude is that we don't have credible evidence to prove the theory. So what is remaining is that we did not evolve from apes. But why am I coming to this topic is that many of them want to conveniently believe that they have evolved from apes. And they want to say, our ancestors were not wearing dress, so why should we wear dress? So therefore, you have the beaches in the West, or the nude beaches and the nude marches, wherein they try to derive some sort of a proof, or some sort of a kind of justification for what they're doing. Saying that our apes, or our ancestors, they were never wearing clothes, so why should we wear clothes? You know, Mark Twain, a very good thinker, he happened to say, people who don't wear enough clothes, they have very less appreciation in the society. They don't get noted in the society. They don't consider as someone who is worthy in the society. So the culture which is already advancing in the West, I'm talking about the Oxford institution, the Oxford, you know, the Oxford uh, University, you find in case that they are working on some charitable activity or if they are having some protest, you find the students being completely naked and walking on the street. And they have taken the pictures. And now I say, what do you learn in the Oxford University? Now I really don't understand. Are you being cultured? Are you being trained? And then made to live like animals? And I say that still education has not reached you. I don't see. And basing your culture based on a theory which is not substantiated with any proof. So now you need to think to yourself, what is the culture that I am, that I am imbibing? What is that I am swallowing? Why am I swallowing this culture? And what is the right culture for me? Everyone has to think. So these things happen, that's the reason the mobile phones are kept away from you. The mobile phones are kept so that you don't get into extracurricular activities. You know, so that you would do something which is noble, you would not waste your time, and you would not, you would not get distracted from your studies. You should not get distracted. You should have a focus. That what am I going to be in the next 10 years? What am I going to be in the next two years? Whatever, you should focus. So that can happen only if you have some moral, ethical values today. And the third thing that I saw was no smoking zone. You know, I happened to see this even in, you know, when I was in Bahrain airport, I happened to see a place which was allotted just for the smokers, not for others. You know, it's for the smokers alone, all those who are into active and passive smoking can spend their time there. So I saw a lot, a lot of people, men and women, they were smoking very casually. And uh, that was the no smoking zone. There was a caption that I want to share. You smoke, we die. You smoke, it's not only you die, it's we die. You know, passive smoking is so injurious. We say like, be good to your neighbor, love your neighbor. According to the Bible, it says, love your neighbor. And according to the prophet's teaching, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said that you have to be good to your neighbor. A believer is he who of his tongue and his arms, his neighbor is safe. Now if a person is sitting next to you and you start smoking and you are killing him, is this a good culture? And you say like, yeah, we have only this zone. In this zone, we are smokers. In that zone, we are non-smokers. How is it applicable? Something which is bad, 
in any society should not be permitted even in small quantity anywhere else. So we are trying to be very selective. Yes, I'm a 